Good morning, traders. Can you hear me and see my screen? If you can, if you could just type yes in the questions, or I'm sorry, questions. Okay, yeah, thank you. You all now, yeah, thank you. All right, Alec, all right, we're good to go. So let's jump in. Uh, this is the advanced webinar here at Bookmap, and um, we'll go through live forward-looking analysis here, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, 10 a.m. Tomorrow we'll have JTrader, Stocks Trader, and Thursday we'll have... Um, Scott Polsini, futures trader. So uh, they will be trading live. Uh, it is in demo, uh, paper trading mode. So uh, it's not for uh, trade copy or services whatsoever. It's for educating. All right. So uh, we're going to go through the live analysis uh, and uh, how to read order flow uh, that you can apply to all sorts of different strategies. They will go through um, their strategies and how they're trading them. Okay. So uh, pretty complete. Uh, uh, education you get with Bookmap along with the educational course uh, that's online. So let's go through some disclosures and we'll jump right in. General disclosure, all Bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in and take a look. Nice, beautiful day uh, uh, yesterday and today uh, so far. Let's uh, let's take a look here, um, and um, we're going to start off. Um, well, you can see in book map here, uh, 9:30 cash open uh, after a nice move to the upside and a nice move now to the downside. Uh, just trading into this kind of 86, 87 level that I wanted to cover on the higher time frames from yesterday. Okay, so let's go into our higher time frame candlestick chart. Uh, just to, ah, I had another line up here. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't know where that went. Um, anyway, anyway, that's fine. Uh, the uh, This is from yesterday, uh, the line that we put in here. God, it was at 87. 87 so up here um and uh so uh it, yeah we were looking for the see if we got continuation yesterday we did now we didn't get it during the webinar um it came after right after the webinar uh so it's something i wanted to mention here but i also just want to go through uh and mention some of these higher time frame levels okay we started the day off looking at some of these higher time frame levels and how important they can be for you uh, this is kind of your road map, your guide. Uh, and then you're looking for the order flow around those areas. Uh, in fact, I have, um, I took a screenshot uh, yesterday, not this one. Hold on. Okay, so this one. Um, and um, uh, this was the move, uh, this was during the webinar here, okay, over here all this chop and then the, well, the webinar ended uh, and then this beautiful move unfolded. Uh, this is the higher time frame move we were you know kind of looking for and I, I want to just kind of point out here um, look at the distinction can you guys see that I mean look at that distinction in the volume there okay they're moving it away from this previous value area here okay, and this is what it looks like now it's trading up into high liquidity here that would be the first target uh, to look for because we don't know if if price is going to come back down and it's going to bounce off of that you know we, we might get a pull back all the way to here uh, and you can see there's liquidity already in there right and um, uh, and then you know this they're moving it away this is going to create a new uh, trading level or zone in here then that was broken and it was broken throughout the day uh, steep pullback uh, kind of near the uh, end of the day and then a move right back up uh, into 4500 Okay, so, uh, you know, starting to understand order flow on these smaller time frames in Bookmap will lead to also, you know, these higher time frame moves and starting to understand them. It's the same thing we're going through in these small time frames. It's just these markets are fractal and we only have an hour to an hour and a half to go through uh, the order flow. So uh, this concept of traders moving it away from a level uh, we'll see also on uh, small, much smaller time frames, and we'll go through it. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, wanted to note here: this is our uh, 87 level up here, okay? And this is what we marked up 
on the chart. So these are our guides here uh, on, on where we might go. Uh, here, this is more like 87 here. No, this was our higher time frame. Sorry. 84, 87. Yeah, there we go. There is some, it was something like this. That's, that's correct. Um, so, uh, uh, this was the zone, uh, we kind of marked up and, and here's why, right? This swing here and the drop below it. Okay. And then also this swing right here, you can kind of see it in the, in the candlestick chart, uh, right in here. And that's where we we put our 87 level. Okay. Now we didn't know that, right? But we're going through the scenario. If we see continuation in the move here on the hourly chart, we'd be looking for the move up into those areas. Uh, and uh, we did. So here's the 15 minute chart, right? And uh, well, we see this is this was yesterday's action and we weren't quite too sure up here. Is it gonna accept or reject above this area here? Well, we got our, our answer after the webinar and the continuation. It definitely accepted and then went higher. Uh, right in here, we're not so sure. Uh, you know, we're going through also levels on the downside. Uh, we might come down to this 425. We might come down to, uh, you know, 4400, 4, uh, you know, whatever it might be. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get across is look at your higher time frame levels uh, and then look at your order flow around them. Because our 87 level played out very, very nicely here. Uh, and uh, it continued on up. And now we're playing again back at that 87 level right now uh, in the order flow. Okay, so uh, uh, just 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 broke below it uh, as we were speaking here. Okay, so uh, are we back now into another range here? Uh, are we going to accept lower? Uh, let's, so let's start to mark up some higher time frame areas here. Uh, I like this one here uh, down around uh, 62. Uh, really nice one. Okay, so let me see if I can draw my line here. horizontal line where is it there it is at 91 I just I just don't get this platform okay that's where we want it all right okay so we'll keep an eye out for that a pull back to that area here uh, if these sellers uh, continue in here um, all right, so yeah, there's lots of different uh, areas in here. There's another one up here to take a look at around 4486, uh, and then also the swing high, of course, uh, and then our higher time frame is back up into here around 4520 or so. All right, so uh, uh, these are some areas to take a look at for the day. Uh, we may come continue on down 4443. It could come down, you know, into into further areas here. I'm not going to draw them all up here uh, since uh, it's taking me a bit of time. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, good morning, uh, David. Good morning, Alan, uh, and others here. Anyway, just wanted to cover some of the higher time frame analysis here and a little bit of recap of yesterday as well. Okay. And understanding the, the order flow around these areas and how important it is uh, to see these distinctions in here. Uh, you know, when you, see, when you start to see that, it means something. Okay. See how these are similar to these dots over here. And what's their action? Uh, you know, they're moving price uh, away from an area, this previous area down here, All right? So uh, yeah, look for this in your order flow. Look for these areas of liquidity uh, to transact uh, and then see if see what happens at those transactions. If, uh, you know, uh, what happens around these areas is really, really uh, key, critical. More buyers, they trade through it. We, we pull back here, but we continue on. Uh, so. Uh, uh, anyway, let's uh, jump into Bookmap and take a look and see what's going on. Uh, do you guys have any questions about yesterday? Uh, I'd be happy to go through it. See, Alan, you're saying the markets uh, wait till <laughs> wait till finish. Yeah, actually, this is something I wanted to to cover. Um, time frames uh, in here. Okay. Now, it, I think I, I mentioned yesterday. Algos really don't care. Uh, you know, the algorithmic trading is event based. Uh, time is. It does not matter to them. They're looking for events. When events un unfold or occur, uh, they react. In fact, that's the way Scott Pulsini is trading. Uh, he's looking for a big event to occur, uh, such as um, uh, you know a stop or iceberg, uh, you know major transaction. Uh, he's waiting for that event, and then he's looking for the order flow around that event. Uh, 
Okay, so very similar uh, in that in that uh, case. Uh, however, like these uh, certain times of day cannot be ignored uh, when people are much more active. One of them being the open, and and the other one being the close. Right. The others are uh, news related events. Uh, it might be geopolitical. Then we don't know when that event takes place, and that can be really uh, cause havoc in the markets and very difficult to trade technically. Uh, or uh, there are scheduled events like non-farm coming up this Friday, uh, and those events uh, we know exactly when they're going to take place, and we want to look about the look at the order flow around those events. So these are some of the timings in the market, uh, and let's take a look at the open here. Okay, so we have 9:30 open, move to the downside right back up here uh, and uh, buyers trying they can't seem to make it any further they're making actually lower highs in here even on strong volume uh, you know by looking at the order flow in here i'd be looking for the breakout up into 4520 okay no no doubt like this is strong volume up at the top edge uh, they buyers should be able to break it okay they didn't so the second scenario is looking for them what happens on the other side now we've seen this pattern so many times in bookmap uh, that um, uh, it, you know they're trying to get higher here and they cannot so we have our buyers pull back steep pullback to where where they broke out from here okay this is another thing we always look for this and we assume that the first scenario is they're gonna there's gonna be support here okay and there was uh, buyers come back in but now they make a lower high. They can't even get to this liquidity at, at 45.15. And we get a, another pullback here. Now this, this pullback uh, is not quite as steep. It, it does kind of come to where they broke out from, but boy, I'd be looking for, you know, maybe down here, kind of draw a trend line in there. Uh, and uh, and we see the break of that trend line. Uh, but um, yeah, I, actually I want to get rid of that. Um, I don't want to cover the, uh, the trend line uh, because uh, uh, although I like them and I look for order flow around those events, um, what I'm talking about here is pullbacks and who's in control in these areas here. Okay, now they buyers could not seem to sustain a higher high or just even trade at equal highs up here, even though they're buying. Right, we see the dots up here; they just can't do it. Uh, so we're going to find sellers, and the sellers are going to move. And let's just zoom into this area here. Okay, up to where it broke from. All right. And uh, yeah, we're going to find sellers. Now, where are they going to take it? Well, the first target would be down to here again. Retest this area here. Is Are there buyers still going to support it down here at 45.05? Uh, and we would assume so, but we're not finding buyers up here. So looking for sellers to try to push it through that area here and then come down to 4,500 and then maybe down to higher liquidity, uh, and maybe it starts to trend, uh, looking for this kind of uh, 91 area, 92 area down here. All right. So these are the two scenarios to look for. The primary scenario would be for 4520 to transact. They couldn't. Right. In in fact, in this little area here, you can see there's not so much uh, buying up there, and we start start to see a little more selling here. Now we're looking for big red dots on the downside in here. Good morning, Dove. Um, and uh, now I know this is review. We'll get to the forward-looking analysis, but uh, uh, we want to understand the order flow around these events. Uh, and then uh, now, no, no sellers yet. Now we're starting to find some sellers. Okay, and let's mark up where we're looking for it yet again in here. Okay, this swing here. Okay, now, yeah, I'd be looking for sellers to try to take it down. Uh, we're below this little swing here now unless we get the scenario of buyers back up here around 10 okay 45 10. okay we, we we get back up there and we didn't get our buyers okay now this is this is where it can, becomes a little easier we didn't get the buyers up here we're trending down now if we get sellers down here on this double bottom here if we get sellers down here it shouldn't be a double bottom it should break and we'd be looking for at least 4505 and this is the the especially at the open at the open this is where they can push through really hard uh, and then go and start to trend lower and that's what unfolded here now it, that's obviously just total hindsight uh, no problem we're going to look for this in real time again and again 
in again. All right, beautiful move uh, through on down to 4,500, on down to just shy of this 92 area. Uh, and you're still bearish here. I mean, sellers are in control from this point onward, okay, from 4507. They broke through, but this is really where they took, took control. We were looking for them to take control down here. And you can also see that uh, in uh, in this horizontal line. Okay, so boom, ni nice move to the downside. Okay, look where this pullback came in. Okay, back up to where we dropped from here. Okay, we're not making this stuff up. Right. And pretty strong buying in here, too. Like buyers might try to take control Okay, above this area. This is where we draw another horizontal line in. My, my point uh, here, though, was to look at um, not so much the uh, uh, order flow in here, is to cover uh, these timings of the market. Right. Start to understand, like, who's in control early on uh, and, um, uh, you know, at that 930 open because around 10, uh, 1030, we're going to see something different, uh, and uh, it, you, we start to get some chop until um, you know the the European close. A lot of times, uh, so you know that um, uh, that first hour, uh, you get really nice moves and and nice trends, or first half hour I should say, uh, very uh, nice moves typically, uh, and then everything kind of shifts and changes, and 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 traders get a feel for the day, uh, and there's all sorts of other trading that takes place. Okay, so in this case, uh, yep, 10 o'clock, move all the way down through uh, 44.75 into high liquidity here, here, and all the way through down here. Uh, yeah, it's actually kind of setting up nicely if we can get the buyers to start to come in. We see higher liquidity at 80 here. Okay, so uh, look, even look at this pullback here. Okay, looking for more buyers up in this area here around 95. Okay, if we get them. Let's see if we get them now. Okay, so we're back to current market. Let's see if we get our buyers up here. If we, if we do, we should get a move right back to 4,500, maybe 05. Okay, so that's what we're looking for right now after kind of catching up. Stream is full, no backup stream. Oh, got you, okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Suleiman. Um, let me see if I can get somebody in here. Uh, hold on a minute. Sorry, guys. Just a moment here. Okay. All right. So sorry about that. Uh, let's get back into it here. Uh, we'll see if stream one comes in here. Uh, so uh, look, look for it here soon. I, th I think uh, uh, Sam is going to provide it. All right. So we're getting our buyers up here. All right. Let's see. Let's let's zoom in here a little bit. Okay. Looking for them again. Looking for a skew in the book underneath. Going long up into 4,500. Let's see it. Buyers still not seeing it. Okay, point of control just moved down. Here they come. All right, so there's our move. Now, looking for them to continue on up to 4,500. Okay, and then I would, like in this small time frame, I would take some off at 4,500. Okay, it would be a scalp. Uh, that's fine. Um, you know, we're, we're covering uh, this, you know, live market and going through this event here and just this event on this small time frame. OK, it's looking pretty good, though, but I would reduce some of my risk up here. This is and we're just this is not a recommendation. This is just a, a sug, or not a suggestion, a, a consideration uh, to reduce your risk. Right. And you're still in it. OK, so. Uh, OK, yeah, Sam's going to set it up. Yeah. Good. Thanks, uh, Suleiman. Um, all right. Move your stop to break even uh, and uh, or you're all out, all in, all out. God, you know, you can make a living out of this. That's five points uh, in the S&P. You could be done for the day. OK, 
you know, trade 20, trade 50, something like that, if you got the account size for it, uh, yeah, you, you can make a real nice living out of something like that. Now, let's let's zoom out, though. Let's look at the higher time frame. So here's the higher time frame. We're just looking for a move up to here. That's it. And it's already done it. Okay. Now, it may continue, right? But in, if you're a higher time frame trader and you're looking for that, okay, well, then you got to take the risk. Okay, the risk is your stop would probably be down here someplace, uh, around 85, maybe lower. Uh, or maybe, maybe you just took some off and you moved it up to like just below the point of control of this range in here. Again, these are trade management considerations. So many different ways to skin a cat in here. So now let's see if we can continue and get back up into this 05 area up here. Okay, it looks pretty good. Still doing it. You know, we, we see the test coming back. Now, let's look at this volume here also compared to this volume over here. Okay, it's it's kind of equal. Uh, so, yeah, you know, maybe a move to 45.05 is okay, but I don't know if we're going to get anything more out of that. We'll have to wait and see once we get up here. Right? So, what's the probability on this trade as a higher time frame? Well, we don't really know. Uh, right now we don't have too much of a of a bias here if we saw massive buying coming in here that overpowered this selling over here yeah we'd have a lot more to lean on okay does that make sense do you, do you guys you know know what i what, what i mean there okay, so here come the buyers right and and they're going to trade up into that 4505 but that's it now we should see some stop runs up here as well. There we go. There's our move. All right. So there's, uh, let's see. I don't know. So I'm from 90, there's 10 points right there. Now this is, it's a nice environment. Uh, it's volatile. Getting 10 points in the S&P is rather, rather challenging. Uh, <laughs> not in this time though uh, but um, uh, there's our move now I, I, I kind of started off um, the, the webinar well the, the main feature I wanted to go through is different timings of the market so I would take my money and run on this one to be honest here's why uh, the timing of, of the market here is this, this is kind of a choppy time right now if we see something very distinctively different then I would think differently, right? That, uh, well, it's it's kind of hammering us over the head, telling us that it wants to go higher. Okay, in this case, since we understand, like we get nice moves at 930 uh, and, and continuation moves, but when we get into, uh, it depends, it really depends on the environment. Okay, but you can see chop starts to develop uh, and uh, uh, we, we can assume some of that. Uh, in these different timings of the market, different hours of the day of the trading session. Okay, so uh, there, there, there's you, there you go. And then here, look, look at this move all the way back down, and look at these traders on the on the offer here, two over twenty two hundred on the offer. Let's see if buyers actually take them on, you know. But some some larger players are in here saying like, no, we've had enough of this. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Back to point of control, a, previ a previous point of control. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a little lower here. Uh, I'd be looking for not only kind of this 93 area here, but uh, 90. Uh, and then maybe we can start trending lower again, uh, back down into 80. Uh, let's see, Alan, wouldn't it be a little easier to trade when less professional, so to speak? Yeah, I mean... Um, well, lunchtime, like, like yesterday is a good example. When the, the markets moved after that European close. So be aware of that scenario and look for it. Uh, it really has to, it has to do with a lot of people, you know, shoring up positions uh, in, in Europe. Uh, and uh, then we look for what happens after that, you know, kind of big event. Uh, so during lunchtime, you know, a lot of times, traditionally during lunchtime, 
you know that that first uh, you know couple hours of the market, and then nothing happens. You know that's also another uh, likely scenario. Just kind of, you know, after that big big trade event, European close, um, then nothing happens for a few hours until, uh, you know, until two two thirty or something like that. Yeah, slower slower periods. Another one is extended trading hours. Okay, looking at uh, uh, you know uh, the Asian and London session. Uh, and the S and P, okay? Because what uh, uh, you can find, I mean, there's all sorts of things that just don't behave. They behave very differently than the cash uh, session. So, for example, um, I mean, I've had it uh, stuck to me um, uh, many a time, where it's like, no, nah, they they can't still be buying, right? It's got to pull back, and it just doesn't, right? So. Uh, what the takeaway from that is uh, when you start to see, you know, buyers starting to come in like in extended hours, they're just going to continue. There's no one on the other side trading it back to the range. It just continues to grind and float higher. Right. So look for that. This is these are things to study. This is market kind of activity to study and then look for the order flow to support it. Okay, so this this is kind of how to build out a trading plan, thinking of di days or, or timings of the market, or times of day in the market. Okay, so uh, you can you can look for like maybe a really really strong close in the S and P, and then look for a continuation in the in the extended hours after that. I mean that's one scenario, or one trading plan. Okay, so. Uh, uh, there's all sorts of ways of of, uh, of kind of looking at this. What about the high liquidity at 4,500? Yeah, that's something very much to contend with there, right? I mean, we we just covered this like uh, um, uh, briefly there. The 2,200 uh, contracts up there, larger players coming in, just saying like, no, we've we've had enough, um, and uh, so we are looking for those moves lower. It's already gone down to. Uh, the first one here was around 93, 94, somewhere like that. And then the next one is 90, right? And I'm still looking for 90 uh, here. Now, this guy just pulled a lot of that liquidity as well. So, uh, yeah, that's a, another kind of dynamic that just, just unfolded, right? So now it leaves the buyers to come back up and test this 4,500. Yeah, I mean, you can see how the, see how the dynamic here, I mean, just it's... It looks like you're like you're kind of flip flopping with your analysis, but it's it's not, you know, it, it's because these guys pulled that liquidity. They even pulled here. They didn't even want to be. A, they didn't even want to deal here. Look at that. Twenty two hundred contracts. That is a massive skew. Okay, so. Uh, and then they pull it away from the market. It allows the buyers to come up and test these areas here. And break through, okay, back up to forty-five oh five. All right. Uh, let's see here. Another question. Uh, Three forty-five is called the digital close. Yeah, I mean, there's just, they're just bashing each other back and forth. You'll, you'll see all sorts of stuff. Guys, sorry, I missed this as I was reading the question. Uh, I don't really like it. I mean, I, I it, they're breaking out, and there's a little bit of volume here, but it's not really that strong. Uh, so, you know, we could still, the primary scenario is still 4505. But this breakout here, read the order flow or the volume above it here, and it's not very strong. Right. In fact, it's kind of turning into a false breakout here. We're right back in the range, looking for these mean reversion guys to trade it right back down to 95 here. Okay, maybe through it down to 92 and 90 as well. You'll note this mean reversion trade um, again and again and again. False breakout. Sellers on the other side, right back down to to the mean. Okay. Let's see if they do it. Uh, here's where we're going to get a little insight. This little area here, this little pocket of selling. See how it's supported here, or at least it, it held. So there's your mean reversion trade as well. well. We're going through a lot of different strategies here right off the bat. You know, different times of day. 
uh, and uh, different strategies around those times, as well as uh, this mean, re mean reversion trade, false breakout uh, trade. And we read it. You know, it was doing it. Most likely scenario is up to 4505. We look for, uh, you know, something else, something different to unfold in here. Beautiful pullback and a continuation uh, and even through 95 here. Okay, so let's see if we can get to the other side, 92 and 90 here. Yeah, POC is the mean um, or, you know, a reversion to like, you know, uh, uh, the most traded level. Yeah, VWAP as well. I mean, we're trading back to areas of value of, 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 um, uh, you know, okay, so yeah, technically, um, uh, mean reversion. Well, technically, um, yeah, I guess uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, Google it and uh, what exactly that that means. But what I'm covering here um, is a re a re uh, reversion or like a um, retest to areas that were significant is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so technically I might be wrong on that one, Alan. All right. And it, it, I should look it up and, and I have to be um, on on point in here. So my, my bad on that one. All right. So uh, what we're looking though for is uh, uh, back to areas of um, activity. Uh, and that would be one of them is the POC. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's important that, that when, when we cover things in here in Bookmap, um, our, you know, the education is really important to be on point very precisely. Uh, so I, I'm calling that out and saying that I'm not being that precise about it. I'll look it up and I'll come back. Uh, because like areas of absorption and exhaustion, these it has to be very tightly defined. Uh, and uh, and then we can visualize it in here and, and, and cover it. Like, for example, is this absorption here? No. It's not. It traded through it, but it was totally um, uh, traded, though, and the transaction took place here. Okay, uh, there was just a bit more selling pressure that came through it. Absorption means it 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 cannot get through that area. It trades, it trades, it trades, and the, it just sellers cannot push it through, or buyers cannot push it through an area. Okay, it was com all of that buying and selling pressure was completely absorbed by the limit orders on the other side of the trade. Yeah. All right, so we made it down to 90. Okay, that was an, the next scenario. If we're not going to get up to this 05, and we noted that, we noted that uh, this looked like a, a potential false breakout as it was unfolding. We didn't really like it. Uh, and then we look for uh, the move back down. Uh, where sellers will trade it back to 95. Okay. Now in these areas here, we kind of also look on the other side of the trade who's in control. This is where buyers took control. Sellers took a bit of control here, but we're still the the bigger move is still here from 96 on up. Does does this resonate with you guys? Like understanding where buyers and sellers are taking control is really critical. Because you'll see how it creates market structure. Yeah, uh, logical. Yeah, the guy the guy up here, yeah, we covered that. Um, yeah, you just, I mean, no intent to trade whatsoever. Did, did he trade at all? This is what just drives me nuts. Is like, no, he, he was never even tested. Not one transaction. No, I'm sorry. He did. He, he was. He was. So he was for real. I mean, like... You, you can't call it spoofing, right? Uh, if he's staying in the book and is transacting right into him. So there, there's our answer right there. So this is not, you know, uh, deceptive or, you know, a prohibitive practice here. 
So he stayed in the book until he didn't want to didn't want to trade any longer, and he changed his idea. So, but he did trade over here. Yeah. So anyway, that's okay. We can learn from it still and understand kind of you know the game up up in here. Beautiful pullback, guys. Here, this illustrates the point again. Okay, and uh, it's not really much of a low volume pullback, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, look at the dots in here, but then look at the bars and the dots in here too. So we're getting some buyers in here now too, down down at this 90 level. All right, so we're back to the mean again. Okay, now it, since we're getting some buyers in here, they can take it back to 98 here. I'm I'm looking for it right now, for them to take it back to 98 and maybe 4500. Okay, so you know again it would be like a, a how to how to trade these is is you know is kind of tricky. Um, uh, because is, everything's kind of starting to change here. And right, now we're back in the mean, or, you know, the point of control here, or the, you know, the, the value area. We, we're looking for buyers to take it above it here. Okay. Now, I, usually I just jump in uh, when I see this and I'm looking for them to extend it. This one I I, you know, I kind of tempted, but I don't like it. You can see like a, it's really bashing around this point of control here. And so that's not really giving me the clarity I'm looking for, right? It can go either way here. Now, what's the reaction to, this is where you get insight. What's the reaction to this guy just dropping his liquidity again here? 500, 600 contracts just, just dropped it a little bit. They're on the other side here too. And now he's, now he pulled. Okay, now he pulled. Here come the buyers back up to 4,500. Okay, not not yet. So well, they they were able to get to ninety nine. Um, let's see if they can get back in here again and then forty five hundred. Here we go. Yeah, looking. I'm looking for it here. We got our buyers up here. They just need to now push it uh, to and try to explore this area here, forty five hundred. Okay. Again, in terms of a trading strategy on that one, boy, it did it, right? But I think that's a little risky for me as well. I wouldn't be looking at it. Where I do look at these in terms of a clear uh, order flow opportunity uh, is, um, you know, when we see like the the move from the outer edge back to the center, and then you see the big dots on the other side here, kind of like this in here. But it would be great if that. Well, he did pull at the last minute here. Yeah, kind of, kind of like this in here. Um, it's pretty clear usually. Uh, you'll you'll see it. This is it's just because there's selling on the other sides of this here. It, it's just not as clear, uh, and, and didn't quite like it. Um, so yeah, we're looking for clarity around this level here, and we didn't really get it. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if we get some, that, some of that clarity, like this might be clarity here. Okay. If we had bigger sellers here down around this 92 area and we get a small pullback and then more sellers down here. Yes. I'm looking for them to drive it lower 90, 85. Uh, yeah, maybe down to 80. Okay. We made a lower high here. Let's see if we can get it. See, see how there's buying on the other side. This is make it makes it for a more kind of choppy uh, uh, environment here, right? This is really choppy in here. Okay, we're getting our sellers now. Okay, and again, due to this choppy environment, boy, you know, uh, like learning from yesterday. We're looking for a move maybe to the outer edge here. Maybe it even breaks it, but looking for it to also trade back into 95, back into the range here, okay, the, the value area. So just looking for an excuse for these sell or these buyers to come back in and move it back to 95. And they're not showing up. They're not showing up at all. Okay, so we, we're going to hit 85 here. Uh, and then let's see if they show up down there and try to move it. Now, uh, if... 
for them to move it, the first move would be back up into about here, uh, 88 or 90, okay? Because that's where these sellers came in and took control. So we're looking for a, a deep pullback, actually, back up to here, to 90. All right, and let's see if they can get up above 90 here on buying. If they can, we're going to come to 95. Uh, structurally, boy, this would be your area here. I mean, here's some structure and here's some structure here. Okay, I, I still like this area, though, here. I want, I want to see them retest that area, okay, around 90. Okay, there they are. There's our test. Now, do we get more buyers up here? We're going to get a flip and a move back to 95. How's the buying in here? It's okay. We'll likely get it here. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I, again, I, it just doesn't, the order flow around this area here just doesn't look that great right now. I mean, yeah, they're on the bid here around 87, 86 or whatever it is. Uh, we're starting to get buyers in here, so still, you know, you, you know, likely to get the move to 95 because you know they're bidding up here. Okay, well we didn't. Okay, we still may. Uh, this liquidity got filled. Okay, just no no buyers interested in taking it back yet to 95. So looking for sellers here to try to move it. Let's see if we get back down to 85. All right, we're getting we're getting some interest in here. There's some buying, but that buying didn't take it anywhere, right? That was that. There's there's a transaction. It was absorbed basically. Okay, so we found some sellers in there, and we're below it now. Let's see if we can get. Let's see if we can get down here a little bit lower here and get our sellers in here. I'm looking for that. Primary scenario is 80, 80 here. Looking for sellers right here, right now. And let's see if they can move the market back down to 82 and 80. Uh, yeah. Um, Viva La Vida. Yeah, you, uh, how do we... Um, Oh, of course, uh, Alec. It's not. It's not illegal to cancel an order, but it. Boy, it's very suspicious if you throw in very, very high liquidity, um, for a very short period, and then maybe get filled on the other side, uh, and uh, and then pull that. Uh, then that would be uh, that would be basically definition of spoofing, which is illegal. And it happens. You know, I. Th more than we probably know. Yeah, I mean, we, we can see the dirty tricks in here. Obviously, we cannot match up accounts, so we don't know uh, uh, if it's spoofing or not. But we can we can really kind of start to look at it and assume uh, quite a few things. Again, there are assumptions, though. Uh, iceberg and widget can I explain that yeah so this is the current uh, here here we go guys here's our move looking for 80 let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can hit it not a whole lot of yeah enough selling down here you should be able to hit it here still haven't still haven't even gotten to 82 yet though
Uh, let's see here. Uh, so this is the current readout of stops and icebergs uh, down here in the widget panel, right? So it mine might be different than yours. I'm the the readout here is, is summation. Uh, I can show you my um, stops and icebergs uh, in the subchart here. So summation and summation here. So here here we go, guys. Looking for that move into we're at 82. Still looking for 80. And they're just fighting it. Huge iceberg buying in here too. Well, not it's not huge. Uh, let's turn on the on charts. Uh, iceberg stops an iceberg indicators. So anyway, my point is on the on the uh, the readout here. It might be different than yours because when you open up Bookmap, you start collecting that data. So you can see I opened my book map somewhere around here, around uh, 7:45 or so, uh, and uh, you know then I'm I'm collecting uh, uh, data from then on. Uh, Rabbit, I don't quite understand. Same question on how it works for BTC. What, which one? How does what work? Yeah, it looks like our mean reversion guys are back in the game, back to 95. See, look at the distinction here. So the target is 95 here. Okay, it looks pretty good. Look, this looks pretty pretty high probability here. Uh, the distinction is here. We're getting a little pullback here. This is the first pullback. We should get more buyers in here and we should get the move to 95. Okay, the distinction is here. Uh, the buyers came in. And we're just looking for 95. And that's it for now. Okay, it might turn into something else. It might go to 4,500. Okay, we're just looking for this move, though. Just, you know, smaller moves, just building confidence for looking for smaller moves here uh, in, in this environment. And it, look, we'll, we'll, we'll zoom out and look at a higher time frame. Uh, but on this time frame here, we're just looking for this. Uh, the stops rabbit the stops and icebergs does not work on uh, on crypto. Okay, it only works for CME Group futures, uh, and um, uh, it, it, you have to have rhythmic data. They're the only data providers that offer it. There's our move, guys. Ninety-five. Okay, pretty was, that was pretty pretty easy read. I thought uh, for the move to ninety-five. Nice little pullback here at 90 as well. And we, we covered this the other day on pullbacks uh, in, in detail. We look for like where it might pull back to and we look for kind of like a few different things. Little clusters in here and large transactions maybe into high liquidity. Uh, we also look for areas where it kind of pauses uh, and then you see the buyers come streaming in again. And that's, that's what it did here. Here's our little pause here and then here's our pullback. Okay. Now it could have pulled back to where it initiated from. That would be a very deep pullback. Uh, but if there's more volume here and less volume on that pullback, we're still looking for buyers to support it and a move back up top of the range and then also 44.95. Okay. <laughs> Look at this guy. This is hilarious. Um, this is great. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, this iceberg here um, really, really chased the market. Uh, they got filled down here uh, and thought they were going to kind of miss out, I guess, um, and uh, or were feeling the pain, I don't know, uh, and uh, decided that they better get out. Uh, so they did, we'll way, way back up here. Guys, beautiful move. Now, they're going to move it to the other side, looking for 4,500 now. Okay, so nice, nice volume in here. Nice volume. So 
let's see if now I don't like this is one thing on the volume in the in the order flow read I don't like is this looks great but up here it doesn't look great so likely we're going to chop around in here and even can get down below here with sellers here so so what looked so clean and clear initially for a move up to 4500 is like on on pause here due to the the, the volume within and the and the transaction into here as well um, we want to be careful with this one great volume it's a stop run okay so if this is great volume and but it's a stop run it mostly means that people are getting knocked out of the market they're not entering the market okay so we want to be really careful on this here uh, reading the order flow reading the order flow on this event this breakthrough of 95 okay and now uh, originally it's like oh yeah it's coming right up to 4500 okay and it may but just being a little more cautious here because we can see into exactly what happened within this move. And we know it's a stop run. And we know stop runs are usually people exiting the market. So it's not new buying coming in, right? If, if we don't see a stop run here, we know it's new buying. Okay, so, and, uh, and then the move up here, well, the stops took place here and then it moved up a little bit more. We wanna see new buying up here around 97. And we didn't get it. Okay, now they may come in. There may be, may be new buying up here at 97. Let's see. Let's see if we get it. Here they come. All right. So likely move to 4,500. Okay. Maybe maybe 01 here. There they go. Okay. Now we didn't know that earlier until we got saw this start to, start to unfold in here. Okay. Now you have to be. That's a quick jump and a quick move to look look at that uh, and then look for that move. Okay. But uh, yeah, just being very careful, uh, even though the volume looks great, we, we understand it's a stop run. Okay. We, we're looking for new buyers to come in. And uh, now we found them. Now look at the condition of the buyers coming in in here too. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not that decisive. I mean, they're, they're moving it, okay. but it's not like uh, some of these other areas in here okay. or sellers in here. All right, so understanding that the, the types of orders within the order flow also gives a lot of insight. Oh, this really cracks me up. Yeah, so this guy, this guy started getting filled here on his iceberg. 15, 19, 21, 50, here it is on the subchart as well. Uh, and then stayed in the book here. That's that blue line here. So his iceberg didn't get filled, didn't get filled, didn't get filled. As price is moving away and then all of a sudden <laughs> he gets kind of scared. Uh, and just like, oh boy, all right, I got, I want out or in, whatever it is, uh, you know, doesn't want to miss the move or is feeling the pain and wants to get out, uh, one or the other, but uh, definitely moved it right up to the current market and started getting filled again. Okay, so uh, uh, another 22, another 13, and then the total here was 150. So 150 icebergs uh, transacted at this point finally here. On, on two different price levels, one down here and one up here. All right. I mean, it's a lot of transparency into these markets. Okay, we're, we're talking about all sorts of things. We talked about stop runs and what that means. Okay, and then after that stop run, we see that new buying coming in. Yeah, great. Um, the um, At least the move to 4,500. Now, you know, it moved very quickly to it. Very hard to kind of capture that one. Uh, and uh, also the, the, the iceberg here, okay, uh, as well as, well, we covered a lot of stuff already. Uh, mean reversions, also time of day. And looking for chop during this time of day here. Okay, it's 11 o'clock East Coast time. 
so maybe we'll um, uh, we'll still continue to chop until um, uh, kind of uh, same thing as yesterday until about 11:30 or 12 somewhere around there 11:45. Uh, look look for that distinction again in the in the volume and and uh, uh, see if we get uh, new buying and selling coming in after that. Okay, another iceberg just pulled. And is just just transacted a bit here. No, it's still in the market here. Yeah, there it goes, 180. Okay, so another iceberg uh, along with high liquidity here. So let's see if we get a kind of a quick pullback maybe to 4,500. Some stops also triggered here. So just looking for, you know, now this is a total counter trend trade. And this is like counterintuitive as well, right? Because we're, order flow first is telling us it's, it wants to go higher here. And we're just getting some insight in, into some of the stops and icebergs in here. Yeah, yeah, the order flow rules. Uh, yeah, always go with the order flow. Okay, stops and icebergs, if it goes along with the order flow, that's what we want to see. So in fact bigger picture this is pretty typical order flow getting filled or i'm um, li limit orders getting filled here sell side uh, sell limit orders getting filled on the way up here icebergs getting filled along with them and okay, we see currently an iceberg getting filled uh, and um, uh, then uh, it, it takes a while it takes a while for the you know the the, the bigger kind of reversal to take place there's a lot of momentum that has to kind of slow down. And this is when we look at other markets as well. You know, we'll go back to the NASDAQ. How is it doing? Look for these, these uh, correlated markets uh, to give us a lot of insight. I love looking at the correlated markets. I, I think it's just uh, an exceptional way to, to uh, well, let's, let's bring up our, um, our Russell here. All right, so there we have uh, you know over 1,600 icebergs. We have a lot of liquidity getting filled in here. Okay, so we're starting to look for cracks in the order flow, in the foundation of the order flow here. Here, here we go. So we're getting to move back down to 05. Now, let's see if we get sellers below 05 to trade it back down to about 4,500. Okay, here's a pullback here. Here we go. Sellers should be able to hit it and drop it down to 02 and 05, uh, 4,500 here. At least a test down into those areas. Okay, low volume pullback. Now, wouldn't look for wouldn't look for this move to 4500 until we get sellers back down around 04 here we covered this yesterday too like you can even look here's some exhaustion look for a, a, a trade down to 04 down to 04 and then uh, you know you got to reduce either either that's the quick scalp or you know you're looking for adding more at 04. Uh, and and uh, uh, and then looking for the move down. Now this is a, just a consideration on trade management. Okay. Now we're looking for sellers to trade it uh, to come in here. Uh, so we, we're looking for uh, the move down to 04. Now we're looking for continuation from on, on 04, 04 down to 4500. Okay. There's another trade management uh, uh, or you know way to execute here. 
uh, when you start to see, like you're looking for that scenario. So you get exhaustion up here. You got, and you also have some selling here. So you could look for just to trade back down to where you're looking for those sellers. And we finally got them here, right, right here. It took a little while, but we got them, and then they then they pushed it lower. Okay, still looking for sellers here. Still looking for them. Okay, we're not getting them. But let's see if we get them here. There we go. There we go. Okay, looking for 4,500. And beautiful. All right. So, again, uh, consider, this is just a consideration, taking your profit at your target, 4,500. Okay. On this move here. Now, we've got to look at the higher time frame uh, to, you know, if we're going to look for something else, something more. I mean, we're really, you know, we're covering these things like in these webinars, uh, you know, rather quickly. Uh, and uh, uh, we're not kind of sitting back waiting and watching here, right? So uh, we have a lot of reasons to consider a move back even to 95 here. Okay. It's really choppy in here. We got a kind of a false breakout of the top of this little high here. Here, let me just love this feature on the heat map. Um, reduce the uh, uh, or dim it. Here's a false breakout. Okay. Now, is it going to be sustained or not? Let's. We're looking for our sellers, and we're looking for looking for the the, the traders to trade it back down to this kind of uh, common area here. Okay, back to 95, the point of control. Okay, makes sense. So we're looking for our sellers to support that, the order flow to support that idea. Okay, higher time frame, boy, if we covered just that, it would be a pretty boring webinar. Uh, we'd be sitting around just going, yep, yep, and then looking for it to unfold. But that that's the primary scenario here. Uh, is back to 95. Uh, yeah, go back to the correlation. Um, let's take a look at those other markets. So what's got, what's going on in here? Uh, Nasdaq looks like it's kind of poised to break out. Okay, so this will this will be helpful. This is a good good call, uh, uh, Gazoo. Yeah. So also, uh, well the. The Russell's trying here as well. So S&P should be trying as well, right? So maybe we won't get that move back to, uh, to 95 here. Maybe we're going to get our trend continuation and move back to the outside of the range here. Okay, back to the high, the 90, here, here's the 930 open here, you know, back to 4515. Okay, if that's your scenario, then you dump this and you're looking to, you know, go long. Now you take your profits at 4,500 or or now, you know, in this little area here. And now you're even looking for that scenario here to unfold for 4,515. Is there liquidity up there? Well, there's a ton that needs to get through here at 4,510. And it's not at, there's a little bit at 15. It's more at 20 here. Okay, they're starting to, starting to do it. Even though we have icebergs here on a lot, um, you know, we, we just got to 4,500. That was it. A correlation tracker tool um, works with any combinations of... Yeah, no, sh sure. So now there's a couple different things here, uh, Gazoo, to, to go over. Uh, the, um, the There's the correlation tracker tool. So let me show you where that is. Okay, click on uh, uh, configure add-ons. Uh, and then look here under correlation tracker. Let's turn it on here and then we'll click on it. Uh, and then uh, here's where you add something in. Now you have to already have that symbol open in here to add it. Once you add it, uh, you know, we can uh, like we, we can correlate the S&P with the NASDAQ or 
Bitcoin or whatever. Let, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Okay. Now the red text up here is, is it's it's loading. It's telling us that. All right. So just just so you know. But see how the, the, the correlated markets give us such good insight. You know, we're, we're like, oh, yeah, this is coming back to 95. It's like, eh, let's take a look at some of the other markets. Now, the other markets are telling us something different. So likely, here we go, into the high liquidity up here. So likely they're, we're shooting for the uh, 930 cash high here. So let's see if we can get back up into 15 here. All right, so here's Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's going to town. Uh, nice big breakout in Bitcoin here. Okay, here's the S&P. All it did was make an equal high. Okay, Bitcoin broke out. So I don't really know too well. I haven't really followed Bitcoin, but this is a, they do track with the stock market indexes. Um, and uh, so is this going to be kind of a, a, a big, looking for a big pullback in Bitcoin, or are we looking for the S&P to catch up with it? So anyway, uh, if you're interested in this correlation tracker, you go to the knowledge base, uh, and I'll show you quickly uh, where you can find that. So go to bit, uh, bookmap.com, click on more button, resources, knowledge base, and then you're in the user guide section right now. You want, we want to be in the add-on section, so click on that. Okay, and then scroll down a bit or on the left side here, and you'll see where is it? Correlation tracker. It should be in here. Huh. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the knowledge the knowledge base or the user guide and put in correlation. Yeah, there it is, correlation tracker. All right, so let's go to that. It's, okay, so I'm sorry, I was wrong. It's in the in, it's in the um, user guide section, correlation tracker installation. Uh, you can uh, download it here and install it. Okay, I think it's for. Let's take a quick look in Bookmap here, um, and we'll go to uh, pricing. And let's uh, scroll down a bit and look for it under here. All the different versions in here. Advanced add-ons, correlation tracker. Okay, so you need to have Global Plus for that. Okay, Global Plus version. Yep, you're welcome, uh, Sulman. Yeah, the ES is good for. Uh, I I find the ES is is and 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 the Russell are good for, with Nasdaq as well. Yeah, see which one's kind of leading or not. I mean, look at look at the iceberg still. Uh, you know, is it this really struggling here? Uh, this S and P. Uh, we've got icebergs absorbing a lot. Um, order flow is still the reading for the order flow here is like they're still going to go after this liquidity at ten, uh, and uh, and. The move is to the upside here in the order flow. We're just noting the um, uh, icebergs on the other side, though. Uh, and, uh, yeah, maybe we can get back. Maybe we can see our move to 15 here. Okay. The icebergs, you know, they have to be on the other side of the trade. I mean, there's like a limit limit order. So a lot of times we'll just see absorption or, you know, them getting filled, getting filled, getting filled until they, you know, there's no more buyers left. Uh, then we look for them to be, you know, to really go into profit. We've seen that move many times in here, so uh, you know, keep keep an eye out for that scenario. And yep, order flow rules first. Remember, 
1,300 icebergs getting filled, though. We're just noting it, and we're looking for where the order flow starts to match these events. Okay, and right now it's not. Okay, so we're looking for high of the day, and then if they can get back up above 15, they'll likely go to 20 here. All right, and, and we should see some nice stops above 20. Thanks, Doug. Okay, so SPY liquidity at 45, uh, 451.30. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah, likely. Nice target. Nice target, Doug. So now an there's another correlated market here. I mean, it's just the, uh, you know, the ETF of the, of the S&P. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that's probably 45.20 here is where we're going. Okay, it makes sense as well. Let's look at our higher time frame. And this we drew this line in from uh, from yesterday. And that is at 45.20. Okay, this is our 87 line from yesterday and then our 45.20. And then I would I would look for be looking very carefully around this 4520, see what's happening here. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Um, boy, I, I just I struggle with this platform. Um, A week is just not going to be enough. I need to see more. And a month is just too much. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, looking for the move up up to the 45.20. Uh, and the ne next level after that would be up here. That would be at, at 45.55. And, and why we're going to go over that is because uh, 45.55 up here uh, is uh, kind of where it dropped from. We can we can kind of uh, we can mark it up here, but um, Um, and why we're looking at that as being a more likely scenario is look at look at the order flow for the, the these many hours in here, and this is bullish, right? I, do we see any kind of slowdown in here? It was one one fifteen minute candle from yesterday. Uh, the rest is uh, is it's all pretty bullish in here. Uh, some deep deeper pullbacks in here is true, uh, a few, but basically basically what it did was bounce off of eighty six, and we're still bullish. Right, so we're looking for these higher moves here on these time frames here. Okay, so we're looking for the move up into 45.20, and then watch it carefully to see what happens at that point. If we still see bulls come in, we're looking for the next move uh, up into 55 area here, and we'll keep this on the chart. We'll have it for tomorrow, and we'll see what happened around some of these areas. Okay, so anyway, uh, guys, I, let's see here if there's any more questions. Um, Let's see. Well, the correlation tracker will work for any other um, symbol. So y y any symbol that you, you have open here uh, within Bookmap uh, is available for that correlation tracker. Okay, um, Gazoo, what you might be referring to is the um, uh, multi-book. Multi-book is a different product. Uh, where you can uh, make a, a, a synthetic instrument. So, I, in fact, I've got it open here. I don't have it open. Here. Yeah, I have it right here. Okay, this is Bitcoin right here. Let me show you what this is. Okay, this is uh, the multi-book product, uh, and there's two. This is the multi-book desktop product. What I'm looking at here in this Bitcoin version is actually, see it says at book BMD here? That means bookmap data. Okay, so it's Bitcoin USD, uh, and then we see the uh, uh, SP, which I forget what that stands for, but then MB is multi-book. Um, and um, 
or maybe synthetic price is what it means. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, the point here is this symbol here in the upper left-hand corner, this is what it represents. BTC USD from all these exchanges, Bitstamp, Binance, Bitfinex, Coinbase Pro, and FTX. So you're looking at one symbol here uh, of a consolidation of five different exchanges. And why? Because there, there's these are all different exchanges. There are different price levels. There's different areas of liquidity. If you look at Binance in here, or Binance, even Binance Futures, it's going to be very different. Uh, so here we have uh, uh, these five uh, together, and we're getting insight to where the majority of the liquidity is for those five different ones. This only works with, it'll work with Futures. Uh, it will also work with, um, uh, uh, you know, of course, Bitcoin. Uh, now, this is bookmap data is different than the the um, uh, the other version. Uh, there's the customizer. Let me show you that here. So the customizer okay. is something different. So go to our YouTube channel uh, and then scroll down a little bit in the features and components. And these two videos cover both. OK. Multibook desktop and web and then multibook customizer for creating your own synthetic instruments. So you can look at Bitcoin, Ethereum compared to, you know, something else. I mean, you can do whatever you want, basically. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and we we plan to do a lot more with it uh, and, and looking forward to it. You know, it'd be great to get some stocks in there. Look at some FANG stocks, only, only specific FANG stocks compared to the NASDAQ. Uh, look at your the way that Doug's looking at his SPY. Heck, with the the multi book, he'll be able to look at like maybe just five or six of the or you know up to five, I guess, of the SPY, the main holders, uh, and then uh, only those. And then you can even compare that to SPY or the S and P. You know, I mean, uh, look at you know some really interesting correlations uh, using uh, the multi book and synthetic instruments. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's just uh, it's fantastic. All right. So let's see what else. Where are we here? So we came up to about 45, 12 and a half. And that's it. Starting to see. Uh, haven't, haven't made a, a lower low yet. Well, we have over here. But like this is the swing here that we're looking for. Uh, this 05. Okay, so they're gonna they're testing that right now. All right, let's see if we see buyers come in and support this here. Kind of curious. Trade it back up into. Uh, uh, well, the first move would be 07. Okay, the next one would be 09. Okay, due to these transactions in here. Okay, so what we're looking for is kind of another, it's not really mean reversion, Alan. I'll, I'll have to look that up uh, and, and, and really be precise with it. Um, but uh, yeah, it would be back into these kind of areas of a lot more trading activity. Just a pullback though, just a pullback is what we're looking for here. Okay, sellers are in control from this point onward. Okay, in this very small time frame in here. So, uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to try to extend it down to 4,500 here. Session volume profiles. Well, yeah, th there's lots of different ways to, uh, to take a look at it here. You can configure your uh, chart. I'm looking at just the delta here. This, let's look at just uh, both buying and selling. Uh, I, I love using this tool, uh, Alan, um, is uh, uh, this uh, zoom by drag mode to get exactly the precise data you want within your area. And then you can look at the profile of that area. Okay, So, for example, here's our pullback, guys. Uh, oh, seven, a little bit higher. Let's see if we can get there. Get there. Um, anyway, the, the way to do that is use this tool. Uh, and uh, it depends on what profile you want to look at. Okay, so if you want to look at this very specific profile of, of this data here, 
then left click hold and drag over to about here before it drops below it now that uh, area is and then we come back up here we click back on it okay to deselect it and then we can take a look here let's get rid of our correlated market here for now uh, and then up oh, I just blew it hold on let's do it again okay all right so now we have that data within our chart range here's our profile for it not getting too much from it um, you know most most of it traded up here and and some in here but it's all pretty equal and uh, not getting too much from it yeah now you know that that's that's funny though this is what this is where i really don't like volume profile um we're trying to read this here this is aggregated data for this whole profile i don't really want to look at aggregated data uh, i want to look at where it's trading like at these edges here like up in here this is where we look for breakouts and and again here here's our exhaustion though looking for our sellers exhaustion again here looking for our sellers we get it back bottom of the range you know so it's the it's the details in this trading activity within the range and the volume within that range uh, that we're looking for to give us insight right the overall profile is just mashed it all together into one big profile and it's really not telling us much here and we're looking for now you know sellers down here at the bottom of this range to try to break it if they can pick up their selling right and in this area here there's a profile within a profile right from this area to this area and let's look at that data okay because we have our exhaustion here right we'd be looking for more sellers in here down at the bottom edge here exhaustion again no buyers sellers more selling down at the bottom edge this is where we're looking for them to break it uh, and try to take it maybe down to 45 10 liquidity down here Okay, so let's let's see. I know it. I, this is hindsight, of course. I mean, we we already know that took place. But where did it stop? Okay, so forty five ten actually pulled that liquidity here, so it should go down lower, uh, you know, to to meet some of the liquidity down here, and it didn't. It bounced, bounced back and forth, okay, and then finally it did. Okay, but anyway, that's the way to use the tool. It's a great tool. Um, and uh, you can look at many different profiles uh, that way. Uh, you, you know, you can also, you know, duplicate this, uh, insert another column, and then you can configure it differently and look at your uh, delta. Okay, this is buy minus sell. It's going to give you a different perspective of the profile. Okay, the majority of it uh, up here is buying, no, no question. Um, and uh, you can see where the selling is. All it's doing is buy minus sell for this entire area here, All right? And then just plotting it. Yeah, so good stuff there. Yeah, I really like this uh, this column. Uh, I think it adds another dimension and insight here. This is, talk about where the, where who took control where you can see it. All right, so our forty five oh seven up here uh we never we got as high as six that was it but it looks like they're going to go for it now the 750 here in fact we got the move back down to 4500 okay where do the sellers take control who 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 um who can point out what price level where sellers took control what do you guys what do you guys think in this move to the downside. Oh, five. Mm, yeah, I would, I would be looking for something else. Oh, nine. Yeah. I, I, I like it, Alan, a lot. Yeah, but th this is, um, yeah, that's true. Um, Alec, where, I mean, uh, I would say if, if you're looking for truly taking control, it's here, right? Where they came in and moved it away. So it's this uh, 06 and, and three quarters, okay? 
you know you can also look at some of these other pockets up in here but this is not we don't know that until afterwards uh, which is fine that's fine we can kind of look at you know more analysis later and, and we look for pullbacks to try to get back up above some of these areas but the sellers still kind of remain in control up here at 09 which is pretty good alan but like i i would agree that uh, uh this this is way way clearer here right that's where that sell volume came in i mean you can also look at this area here but um you know this is chop uh and back and forth okay this is distinctive here so I, you know, if you guys um, uh, want to go through an exercise like this, maybe we'll do a session uh, and uh, and go through uh, identifying some of these areas, and then what we think f for a return back to some of these areas, and look at the order flow around it. Yeah, yeah. Before uh, below oh nine is more convincing, I, I would think. O oh, three oh, to ninety nine. Yeah, that's also pretty good. Yeah, I, I like it, um, uh, Kurt. Uh, and you can see the pullback to it and the continuation, right? So again, th this is where it came in. Look for these clusters uh, in the bars as well as uh, the volume dots. This is the most distinctive, though. This is where they're moving it away from this other area here, right? And continue to look for these things. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay, I think I got... Yeah, Lo Love your uh, uh, participation, Alan. Uh, Alec, yeah, I think you're, uh, you're getting it. Um, you're using on thinkorswim everything's a little different volume bars it, it should be pretty similar um boy here's our move like now they're trying to move it below let's see if this is gonna yeah they're gonna go right for 95. now here's here's your bigger like you know trade back down to that the point of control um and these these guys are just relentless these mean reversion type of traders they're just relentless uh, they usually get what they want. And this is, this is where it really, the distinction, you can, you can look at it in hindsight now very, very clearly as well. Okay. But we see it in real time and we look at this as a tradable event. This is a tradable event. This is a low volume pullback after they moved it away. Right. And look for the continuation. Okay, it's not a recommendation. It's not, we're not going through uh, and, uh, um, you know, it's not a trade copy or service. Uh, but look at the order flow around these and then, you know, you have lots of considerations for, uh, you know, some sort of trade management around that order flow event. And that means, you know, in these webinars, we'll cover all, all sorts of different kinds of uh uh, order flow events so depending on what you trade it uh, doesn't doesn't really matter if you're trading volume profile if you're trading uh, patterns uh, if you're trading um, you know candlesticks on your higher time frame <laughs> uh, David I love it good tip brutomsey <laughs> Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, Alan, I what do you what do you mean you're on think or swim? I I thought I thought uh, you no, you've got basic functionality. Yeah, it should it should. I mean, I I've I've you know. I've dived into that, dove into the, that that thinkorswim platform. Um, it looks pretty dang similar. Uh, so uh, y yeah, I, I don't know what what. Well, you're not going to get MBO, that's for sure. Um, yeah, Alan Alan is correct there, guys. Alan is a is a moderator. I think he wrote that earlier, uh, so he he knows a lot about the product.
the POC is also going to be different, uh, Alec. Um, so there's one way. I don't know if they have it. I think that I think they do though. You can reset the POC. This is the way to get some, a very similar POC. Okay, go into uh, an SVP column. You have to have an SVP column. Okay, right click in it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right click in it and go to a reset. And then we're going to go to reset configuration. Okay, and then we're going to put in the um, session time here at 9:30. Okay, then we should be looking at the same. If if you had opened your book map before 9:30, uh, and you have this reset on here for 9:30, um, then it should equal uh, what I have here. Okay. So it's a uh, it's very um, specific. So when you opened up your book map. Yeah, it, the, the resetting is different. Um, uh, so you have to have your column open up here. SV, it has to be an SVP and then right click in it. And then go to reset here. You, I, I, I'm pretty sure, Alec, it's in there uh, in that toss version. Guys, this is quite an event here. Like, look at this. Here, here we have our European close just just closed, and you know. Now I can only ex speculate on this. I can only speculate, right? But look at the selling coming in here, and we're looking for that mean reversion or back to the point of control trade. And look at this. Look at the buyers coming in after that. I mean, this. You know, it just it just kind of reeks of like larger players, uh, and you know them kind of you know finishing for the day here, and then you know uh, now we have uh, other other time frame traders starting to get in and move it back up. Okay, again going for our ten. This is pretty strong volume in here. Okay, where's the liquidity at ten? And let's see if they can get up through that. Then we're looking for. I, I still want to see the spike above the high of the day here for the cash session. So I'm I'm looking for the move to 15 and then 20. All right. So uh, start to look at the order flow in here uh, for that scenario, what it might look like. We might get a pullback here and we might to about here, okay, where buyers are trying to take control yet again. Okay. Now look where we went too. This I mean we're just we're not making this stuff up. Um, let's take a look. Okay. Here's where they took control previously. We came back up and spiked up into that area. All right, so there's that. Uh, and then they came in again here. Okay, this was at 03 down to 90, 99. Uh, I think Kurt was looking at that. So nice move there. Now look where they came in again on the other side though. Look at, see, see the, the big cluster here? And look at the big cluster of buyers on the other side, okay? Where did they move it to? Back up to where it dropped from up here. Okay, now they're trying to take control, okay? This is strong volume in here. Now we're looking for pullbacks, okay? And where's a likely pullback? We covered this the other day in the, in the pullbacks webinar. First pullback is here. Second pullback is maybe here. Third pullback is here. Okay, looking at these volume columns in the, or these volume clusters and consolidation and breakout. Little tiny consolidation breakout. Tiny consolidation breakout. Okay, looking for pullbacks to those areas. Now we're looking for buyers to support it. Okay, and we're looking for green dots, especially up above 05. If we can get that, we should get we should get back up to 10, 15, and then 20. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with that. Look for that scenario. Look for that order flow uh, to uh, uh, start to confirm that. Okay, if it fails and doesn't able to, is not able to do that, we're looking for a move right back down into uh, uh, the most traded level here. All right, so different scenarios and waiting for them to unfold. Okay, so uh, anyway, let's uh, let's wrap it up. We'll we'll call it a day. And uh, we will uh, catch up with you guys uh, tomorrow. We have J Trader uh, at uh, 
uh, 10, 15, 10, 20, that's when he'll come in. So look for him. Uh, but we'll go over the S&P and kind of do a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, recap or, you know, maybe we see something really good at that moment and we'll go over it immediately. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and uh, yeah, Tom, uh, Tom B. Look for Tom B. to uh, start streaming here uh, pretty soon. And, uh, uh, you know, he'll, he'll take the baton and, and move forward. All right, so we're offering you guys some some really nice services in here. Uh, hope you hope you guys find them uh, f find them helpful. All right, so the, our scenarios here is starting to play out pretty nicely. Looking for that move up into ten, okay, and then we'll reassess at that point. All right, guys, yeah, have a good day, and uh, we'll we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>